Hey everyone, welcome back to another Stable Diffusion Tips video. I know it hasn't been all that long, but there's a lot of cool new stuff I want to show you. And the first thing on the docket is making sure that you have the most recent version of the project. You'll want to follow the instructions from my last video very carefully, and we're going to overwrite the old files with new files. There isn't really a way to automatically update. So if you want the current version of the project, you just grab it again from the repository. Simply dragging and dropping the files and overwriting things will, in most cases, upgrade everything without any problems. But the safest way, of course, to do everything is make a copy of your project file first. That way, in case anything goes wrong, you can just undo everything. There may be some cases where it's been far too long since an update has happened, maybe things aren't compatible anymore, and you kind of have to start from scratch. And in those cases, you might have to go back and forth a little bit. Now, I haven't seen any evidence of anything like that happening, but this is a project that is moving very, very quickly, and I imagine that could potentially happen. Anyway, let's take a look at some of these new features, these new buttons. So the roll button was actually replaced by a couple of different buttons here. Originally, the roll button would add a random artist into your prompt, and now you have a new button that allows you to read generation parameters from a prompt and put them into the user interface. So there's now special prompts that can be written out that would actually change the sliders, move things around. Not something I've played with yet. You may also notice a much beefier selection of sampling methods here. From what I understand, most of these will typically arrive at the same result. It's just a method of the path that they take to get there. There's not really a great way of demonstrating these and really you don't know what is better. It, they all kind of give different results and different may or may not be better. In a lot of cases, clicking on a different one of these might be similar to just changing your seed. Speaking of seed, there's a couple of new buttons down there as well. One of them sends your seed back to negative one, which basically gives you a random number each time. And the other one is not so helpful. It can kind of read data from the last generation and input that into your seed. So I haven't found a use for that one just yet. The biggest and most important thing I want to talk about is this button that says high res fix. Now this is an optional thing and it will sometimes give you a very different result. We're going to look at some examples here in a moment, but I wanted to start with this before we started talking about some of the other tips because it gives you another way of using slightly more processing power to get sometimes a much better picture. I mean, some of the stuff I saw was really cool, so I want to share it with you right now. Now for all of these tests, I wanted to use the same prompt so it gives you an idea of the difference. So we're going to use Portrait of a Redhead by Casey Baugh. I cranked up the sampling steps to 150. And all of these were done on the Stable Diffusion official 1.4 full model. Using the same prompt, the same seeds and everything, but using the high res fix with all of the default options gave me this result. And similar to a lot of experimentation, the results aren't always better. It's sometimes a very different look though, and that can be exactly what you need or exactly what you were looking for. And trust me, in a moment, we're going to go over some options that'll confuse you even further by giving you even more options to tweak these little by little. But you can see how powerful this can be combined with the face fix as well. When you activate high res, just be aware that it's going to increase how much time it takes to make everything. It's going to make it and then it's going to make it again. I'm going to show you something next that I stumbled onto accidentally, and I'm going to introduce you to Apple Man. I noticed after accidentally highlighting something and hitting an arrow key that the program wrapped parentheses around it and attributed a number to it. I did a little digging and found some guides on prompt writing and how prompts are generated, how different programs read prompts, and it turns out each of the programs is a little bit different with how it interprets different things. So I'm going to show you a couple of cool tricks that I stumbled onto. We're going to stick with this very same prompt, a man holding an apple, Casey Baugh, and we're going to divide it into three separate parts the man, the apple, and the artist. This number, as far as how it shows up in my experimentation, seems to be kind of like a strength for that particular concept. Dropping the strength of one of the items or one of the concepts, it doesn't necessarily affect that one concept in particular. It can affect your entire piece of work. And to paint you a good picture, I went through each of these. So after dropping the apple down to just 10%, we're gonna bring it back up to 100, try the same thing with the man, and then we're gonna try it with the artist. Also, I wanted to try to bring the man and the apple down at the same time to kind of see what that would look like. The experiment was fun, but the results are extremely unpredictable. It's really hard to say exactly what you need to tweak to actually get your picture to look kind of what you want it to look like. Changing some of these numbers would turn this man into a child. Tweaking another one might turn him into a totally different type of man. And messing with the artist numbers was really interesting, actually. Reducing these numbers for the most part resulted in normal looking pictures, just kind of a different result. 
But when I started increasing the numbers and really bumping things up, that's when I started breaking reality. Some of these settings made the guy look like a weird magician dude until he exploded into like an Apple fanboy. There were a lot of really interesting results where the system didn't really seem to know how to handle the prompt. I would really like to use something like this to get more consistent results or more predictable results, so I'm going to have to keep experimenting, but I wanted to give you an idea of what it does and how it works. On the topic of prompts in general, there's something else that is far more predictable and far more fun and easy to use. We can actually mix two concepts together and have the program basically separate how many steps we want to give to each section. Let me show you. I generated this really nice Walter White and I got the seed number here. And you're going to want to pay attention to the way that these prompts are written. This is only 100 sampling steps. So many of them go towards Walter, the others go towards Jesse. As a warning, you're probably going to have to experiment a lot. Not all of them run this smooth. While this isn't exactly a morph going from one thing to another, it's a really cool way of mixing concepts together or putting things together that probably shouldn't be together. I wanted to save this part for last because everything else really dealt with prompts today, and this is going to really help you copy and paste prompts that are probably things you couldn't have thought of on your own. Stumbling onto lexica.art was huge for me because you can click on each of these pictures, you can see how different prompts are written, and it actually allows you to just copy it directly from there. Not only is it easy to find good prompts, but it's also pretty inspiring in showing you different ways you could write your own. And now that you're armed with the knowledge of how to take these prompts to an entirely new level, the sky's the limit. I think I want to leave it here for today, but in the upcoming video, I plan to talk about alternative models we can use with Stable Diffusion, and some of the other features that were added to this version that I didn't really have a chance to explore just yet. I want to thank everybody for all the support. If you made it to the end of the video, I really appreciate it. And as always, thanks for watching.